My first rifle was a 243. Papa gave daddy and daddy gave to me. I grew up on the last farm the Tawanui River passes through on its way to the Rumahanga River. The headwaters of the Tawanui lie between Te Maunga and Bull Hill in the Haurangi Range. Growing up in the area has meant I've had private access to the western fringe country of the Haurangi. Ironically, I've never been to the hut that bears the name of my family farm. On this trip I'll be joined by Phil Wiles, Paul Jones and the man who invented the airplane, the one and only Richard Pearce. Tonight, Paul and I are going to head down the Tānui River. There's a there's a large slip down by the next tributary that comes in from the true left. Uh, we're going to post up there. There's a bit of a terrace, and um, we're going to we're going to glass that face. So hopefully something uh, pops out on that face tonight for us to to have a crack at. Paul and I head downstream along the Tānui and hook up a spur into some terrace country. Recent weather in the South Wairarapa has meant the bush is dry and really noisy. We find a large slip and begin glassing, but before we can spot anything, night falls and we're forced to head home. Next morning, Paul, Bailey and I head up river, looking to hit some of the slips upstream of the hut. Bailey. Bailey, come it's just rolled over smoker time. We're about, I don't know, a kilometre up the Tartanui stream from the hut. Uh, it's a big slip, um, which has got a bit of sun on it, pretty promising. So, uh, Paul, and Phil, and I, and Bailey are just uh, sitting here having a smoke. I will eyeball it for half, hour, half an hour now, and we'll head further upstream. Uh, the, the wind is all over the shop. Just before 12 o'clock, we've pushed uh, probably about four and a half k's up the Tanui River. There's another really big slip up here, so we're just posted under the true left bank of, this, of the of the river. Um, probably sit up here for an hour or so, and then I'm going to gap it back and put a pork roast on. Just over on my right hand side here, there's some really flat terrace country, um, and Phil and Paul will probably go for a mooch through there, see if they can put something up. There's a bit of sign through here, um, saw a dead animal that someone else has dropped a little bit further back, so could be okay, just depends on, on what the wind does with us. It's all over the shop. Mate, Paul and I, we've just walked back down the downstream, we're back, we're back at the hut and uh, other old mate behind here, he, uh, we come back, he's sawing up wood, he's playing it cool, you know, looking a bit sad and then we notice there's a bit of blood on his shirt and I'm like, did you, did you hook yourself? He goes, no, nah, it's not mine. And so uh, he snuck up, snuck up to the 
to the face that Paul and I went to last night and he, uh, he's dropped a stag. There are all his pillowcases. Oh well, it's 10 o'clock in the morning. I saw a stag up on the clearing up there and then I couldn't get a line on him, feed on him. So I just sat down and waited for a bit and he popped out lower down up uh, up there. And I've just put a put a bullet on him. Emphatic thunk. And then he cartwheeled down the hill, so he's lodged up in the Manuka somewhere over there. That is wicked. Great start to the weekend. Even had a sleep in. Alright, let's go and see if we can find him. Alright, time for a bit of a rejig. Leave some stuff here. And head up in recovery mode. Cool, let's get into it. Oh, there we are. She definitely made finding that easier. Shot from over there, probably in about there somewhere. And it would have been at the top here in one of these gaps and it's fallen down into there. Cool. Yeah, now the real work begins, eh? What a stunning day. There we go, back of the hut. Poppy's guarding. What she says is her lunch, don't you, Poppy? Time to go and have a beer. Say a shout out to uh, Hamish's wife Kate for putting me on a waterproof sock. So I went and bought some bush bark socks, uh, waterproof ones. The Gore-Tex are awesome, absolutely awesome. I love having dry feet. Cheers, bush bark. So I've landed myself on cooking duty tonight. Rich and Paul have headed back downstream to the to the big slip that Paul and I went to last night, uh, hoping to bag a, bag another deer out there. Um, Phil's upstream. He won't be back till dark and I'm on cooking duty, so I've got to look after the bears. Don't know how many will be left by the time they get back. On the menu tonight is uh, a pork roast in the, in the camp oven. I'm being helped by my sous chef Bailey, who's uh, running around trying to catch blowflies. Don't know if she's much help. But, um, yeah, just got the, got the fire set. Um, gonna seal it off, fry it, and then chuck it on the new trivet tray. That Rich has got me, and then add the veggies, it's going to be a mean feed. Mm. Check this out, team. That's the pork roast. Looking really good. Gonna add potatoes, kumara, and then finish it off with some rosemary, garlic, butter, and leeks. And these boys will be in for an awesome feed when they get back. Right, just time to add the kumara and potatoes. A bit more water, and then leeks and butter. Hey Bailey, caught any blowflies yet or what? I think you're a bit obsessed mate. Well, bugger me, we've had a, a disaster in the kitchen. The light my fire Dutch oven, it's cracked. You had a big ping. It's got a massive big crack in the thing. I think it's only, well probably about, you've been used a dozen times. I don't know what's gone wrong, but yeah, not good. Leeks and the rosemary and garlic butter just gone in. Hope it works now that it's cracked. Almost ready for the boys to come home and eat it. Just 
last and where is it? Ugly. Oi, oi, let go of it. <laughs> you can't eat it yet, Poppy. Yeah. Alright, am. Uh, here we go, she fell down from up there. Brilliant. We were up uh, up there somewhere. Well done. So Paul is str is stringing up the next batch of meat that has just been harvested. Paul and Rich went back to the big face downstream, um, walked up the spur, spooked a hind, dog spooked a hind, uh, got into position, were there for 30 seconds boys, 30 seconds? Yep, that about. 30 seconds, Rich sees, a, Rich sees a hind and then the big 7 mil sounded off and blooded itself and Paul has got himself the hindquarters is all that's left. <laughs> oh you got the back stakes, top man, top man. So we're starting to get a larder. Good stuff boys. Good shit Paul. Thank you. Thanks Rich. How's it going? Oh yeah right. How's your day? Good. Good evening. <laughs> Good <Did> you? <laughs> <laughs> Didn't see anything until the very last. Oh, you saw one? one. Yeah. Cool. That, that first slip, just as I got around the corner, I was like, holy f, that's a deer going up the hill. <laughs> <laughs> but just as I got in the mag, I saw the ass go up through the bush. Oh. All right. Good. All right. Yeah. Need salt. Need salt. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> just because. Uh, my kitchen rules, hodangi. Yeah. One shot, one yeah. kill. Wow. Smell good. Smell good, mate, after mm. a trip up the river. Better get in, Paul. Uh, it's about five o'clock Sunday morning. And mo this morning's mission is cherry poppins. We're going to try and uh, get Phyllis deer, eh, mate? Get you, get you, get you across to that stuff, eh? Fingers, yeah. fingers crossed, fingers crossed, and toes. Back from that hunt this morning. Unfortunately, there was nothing out on the clearing today, but um, got um, Phil to do a couple of shots at a, at a weed at a, about 150, 170, just to check his range, and he's, he's on, so we'll be a bit more confident on the next trip.